Oh, wait a minute. I hope he's not smothered. Oh no, where is he? Where are you, buddy? Oh boy. Is he under there? Wait a minute. By the way, these are for uh, fall application for southern grasses coming up. Don't pay attention to that right now. Where's my little guy? Where's he hiding? <gasps> there he is. What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. This weekend is one of the most exciting weekends of the year and for you purists, tomorrow, Labor Day, is actually the biggest day of the three day weekend. That's right, it's time to put down our first fall application of our good old friend Milo. Now I've been doing a lot of videos for beginners and I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a video to show you like the easy way to apply fertilizer. Now I've done videos before on this subject, but I've never done one that shows you this technique, which I think is really good for beginners. And it's actually a way to kind of make things a little bit more foolproof for yourself. All right, so let me get you guys up to speed here. The first thing is I'm gonna link below in the description to the video that I did last week or maybe the week before where I kind of talked about this little space that I'm standing in right here and that it's 1800 square feet but let's go ahead and just do a quick review for those of you who need a refresher okay so what we did last week is we measured out this lawn space now I've done tons of videos on how to measure your lawn but that's the first thing you have to do you cannot get away with that if you don't measure your lawn you really can't start but what we found out is that this section here from the sidewalk over and then up to that palm tree right there is 1800 square feet. I'll go ahead and give you a view from overhead so you can get an exact visual of what I'm dealing with here with 1800 square feet. Okay, so we know now that we have 1800 square feet here. The next thing becomes how much malorganite do we put down? So we go back to the bag. And this is the same bag we used, 1800, unless maybe that was me writing my grocery list remembering what kind of tequila I need to buy, but either way, this bag covers 2,500 square feet, so 1800 is approximately three quarters of the bag. So that means that we need three quarters of this bag. That's just going by, again, not the Florida rate, we're just going by the normal rate of the bag. That means we need three quarters of this bag to get a proper application on this 1800 square feet right here. So if you remember, I told you just to eyeball. I trust you to do that. That's why we use organics. If you go a little bit over, you're gonna be okay. Eyeball three quarters of the bag and put it into that hopper and put it down across this lawn space. And then that brings us to the meat of the question that we have today, which is what spreader setting do I use? So what I want you to do is I want you to put your spreader down low, one third. So you can see that mine has a this. Some of you might have a dial right there. Either way, what I want you to do is put it at one third of max. So what this is effectively doing now is when I open my spreader here, it opens the drop holes only a slight bit. Can you see that there? They're only open a little bit. Okay, now here's where the fun part comes in. Remember your walking speed is 3.5 miles an hour. We're gonna do one trim pass, only one single trim pass just to get the edges clean. And then we're gonna fill in by throwing back to the wheel marks of the previous pass. Again, I've covered all that before, but I'll go ahead and cover it again here real quick just so you can see. But what's gonna happen is when you're done, you're still gonna have material in the hopper. So here we go, let's get started. All right, so there we go in the hopper. It's about three quarters of the bag, wouldn't you say? Pretty good eyeballing, I'd say. 
Okay, so I got three quarters of the bag in there. Now, here's the issue. The challenge that people have when they're first starting out is, is how do I get all of that product down on this spot by only making a single pass each way? Now once you've done that a while, you'll know. You'll learn what spreader setting works, how your walking speed affects that, how the overlap does. You'll learn that, but until you do, this is how you do it. You keep it at that low setting, and we're gonna go ahead and just make one nice and easy pass across this area, and then we're gonna recheck and see what's left. So this part here is called the trim pass, and most broadcast spreaders are gonna have some sort of an edge guard or edging feature that allows you to basically shut off half the swath so you can do a half app is a trim pass. This just helps you make everything neat and tidy. It also helps you create those domination lines we all love. Oh yeah, trim pass. Now we're only gonna do one of these. And now you're gonna see, we're gonna switch to full width swap. We're gonna go up and down the rows, back and forth, throwing back to the wheel marks of the previous pass. My swaths here are approximately three and a half feet apart. Your mileage may vary. You'll also notice me putting some ass into it. That's that three and a half mile per hour walking speed. Oh yeah, put that ass into it, boy. Okay, finished with pass number one. You can see how much I have left. It's actually about half. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep the setting the same since we're pretty much halfway down. Now we're just gonna go the other way and that way we're gonna avoid striping and we're gonna keep our application consistent. second set of passes you really have a chance to make your technique perfect. I hope on that first set of passes you were watching the drop rate right out of the bucket so you kind of understand how fast that stuff is actually coming out. Now you just adjust your walking speed. In my case I'm gonna keep it the same three and a half miles per hour but if you had a little bit less or a little bit more just adjust that walking speed and use that muscle memory. I hope that makes sense. Use that brain in your head. You can keep using this technique as long as you like, but after a while, experiment with opening that hopper just a little bit higher. And see if you can get it done in a single pass. got a little bit left but not much so what we're gonna do with that we're gonna circle dance that out of there and of course if you want to know what I did with the other quarter at a bag I put it down on that section right over there. I'd say that's gonna be pretty darn perfect. So there you go, guys. Now the reason that you do the overlap the way you do is you wanna avoid striping. If you were to go the same way again, you possibly could put down things too heavy in one spot and not another. By doing that crisscross, you're just evening things out really nice. And then the idea is that after you do this a few times, you start to understand how your walking speed can control the amount that comes out. And when you do that, then you can start adjusting the openings on the drop holes or adjusting the spreader settings as needed. Once you get that, you'll have muscle memory. It's just like riding a bike. You'll be able to do it in one up every time. But until then, I hope that you use this method and increase your level of success. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn.
By the way, some of you may have noticed the white rocks that are in your Melorganite. What that's for is to give you a visual. Because of the color of Melorganite, it's tough to see when it's coming out of the spreader. So they give you these white rocks in there. They're almost like tracer bullets as a way to help you see. And trust me, I can see them, so it helps me see how wide the swath is. So one thing you guys ask me a lot about is what cigars do I like to smoke? So I'm not really a cigar expert, not even in the least little bit, um, but I do know what I like. And uh, Fuente cigars are my favorite. And actually this one apparently is pretty rare. I got this from a subscriber named Jeff Lacuta. And actually those of you who have asked me a few times where the Super Recycler went, well here you go. There you go. What's up y'all? Hey, so real quick. This is Jeff Lacuta. He is a subscriber, and he and I have been friends on Facebook and that for, I don't know how long, over a year now, right? Yeah, about a year and a half. And uh, he's a local Floridian. Something with a pesticide license, right? Well, formerly was at the University of Florida. Now I'm uh, with Florida Fish and Wildlife. I okay. do aquatic plant management on uh, Pinellas, Pasco, Hillsborough, Hernando water bodies. Uh, but formerly I was with the University of Florida. I did forestry, a lot of herbicide work, and yeah. uh, did have my pesticide applicator's license. Pretty cool. So pretty much any kind of invasive aquatic plants, you're kind of out there eradicating that? Uh, for sure. We're uh, finding them. We have contractors and cooperators who actually do the management of them, but uh, we kind of lead the management plan on the water body and the actual physical spraying is done by uh, technicians. Sweet. So that's a really cool job. And so he and I have talked. He definitely is a lawn care nut, has a beautiful St. Augustine lawn. I'll put a picture of that up. But we were also talking, he's got a young family and he said, man, I've got this older, not older, but a push mower yeah. that's really hard to get through with St. Augustine. And I said, dude, just come on down here. You can have the super recycler. I don't need it anymore. I've got some stuff going on. So a lot of you guys have asked. There it's going. It's going to a good home, to a true lawn care nut. Already has the lawn care nut sticker on it. Yeah, we, it's got one of the original old test stickers on it that have never been released. There you go. You got a special sticker and everything, Jeff. Right on. So there you go, man. Enjoy it. I'm sure we'll see pictures on Facebook. But for those of you who are wondering, that is where the super recycler is. Passing it on. I know you're a big cigar guy. Yeah. This fellow, a Fuente. Oh, I know. love Fuente. Comes about a once a year. Um, Konak wrapper, real good, delicious. Oh. Did you know Fuente is my favorite cigar? Uh, no, but I know you're a big cigar guy. Yeah, man. Liga Pravada, UF 13. Oh, never tried one of these before. They're delicious. Both are kind of heavier, robust smokes. That's what I like, full body. But uh, yep, full body. But you'll enjoy both those. Thanks, brother. Yep. Nice. All right. Here. Yeah, for sure. I also do like Gurkha cigars. Gurkha Challenge, I think, is kind of like their everyday driver. I really like those as well. But definitely, Fuente is going to be my go-to. Again, I don't know all the differences and the different aging and even the different like sizes and things they're called. I typically just buy what I have time for. Like this is definitely a good hour to an hour and a half commitment. Some of the shorter ones, you know, it's like a 30-minute commitment. So I kind of look at them that way. Um, I have tried the Opus X before. I just don't think I've aged them long enough because I've gotten Opus X, I guess, like fresh off the shelf, and I don't know. I just they don't seem as complex as what people say. But then again, you know, that's the thing about cigars. They're just like Ford versus Chevy or Toro versus Honda or whatever you want to say. You know, everybody has their own opinions. But again, if you ask me, go to pretty much anything Fuente and I'm there. So with that, depending when you're watching this, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Labor Day weekend and have a great fall season. If you want to see more cigars and alcohol and wine and some lawn care, check out my Instagram. I'll link that in the description below. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the lawn.